It is uh, kill you with truth, chuckle at pain with your uh, your boy D Mac, and we're waiting for Nate and Chad to uh, to join us here in a second. But it's an exciting day, man. It's been um, w- months of buildup, and it just seems so. Um, uh, oh wait, wrong link. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Chad. Hold on. Uh, 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 yes. Hey, Chad, how are you? I'm. I gotta get Nate, Nate set up. Uh, I am fantastic, man. Happy draft day to you. Happy draft day to you. Um, I got. Yeah, let me send Nate. I sent a couple of links to you guys. You sure did, silly man. It gets confusing because I I don't want to not do one. But so too many. oh, I did too many. And there's Nate. He's there now. He figured it out. Uh, man. There he is. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I I know. Here's what I did. Today is such an absurdly busy day, and we are going to be on after the draft is over. So I just wanted to make sure that I sent the both links to you guys ahead of time. So there was one link for this and then another link for later tonight. For that, this and that. One guy's looking this way. One guy's looking that way. The dog says, what do you want from me? You know. (laughs) <laughs> but but uh, i really am concerned that things are going to get so crazy and busy that i would forget to do that and yeah getting um all of our reactions especially you guys after everything's said and done um is going to be fun and i'm going to be out and about um at stoney's on lincoln and let's hope the wi-fi works if not i'll find a i don't know i'll find someplace i'll figure it out one way or the other so it might not be right at 10 o'clock, but it'll be, you know, right, guys, like at, when it's over, when it's over somehow. And um, we'll get some reaction later tonight, and then we'll get the reaction again tomorrow morning at the same time. So let me just throw it out there. Chad, it's good to see you. I know you've been doing ESPN radio for the past couple of days, which is awesome. What's your overall vibe? I got a couple of um, interesting mocks to get to, but where's your head at on this uh, Christmas day of draftness? I mean, I still think the Broncos have to go for a quarterback. It, it, clearly, they haven't done enough. Uh, bringing in Zach Wilson it doesn't move the needle much at all. So between Jared Siddham and Zach Wilson, they've got the most underwhelming quarterback room in all of the NFL. So they've <laughs> got to make a move here. Um, and looking at the draft and how it's going to fall, they got about nine moves or picks they could possibly make. Um, and that's about it. Um, so it's either going to be quarterback It's going to be cornerback. It's going to be edge or they're going to trade. Um, And so that's how the draft, it it seems like it's the most likely to unfold in in my mind. Uh, But hopefully at the end of the day, the Broncos, at least with the 12th pick, if not earlier than that, end up with a quarterback that we can all be excited about. Or or if you go based on the chart that DMAC put up yesterday, the the most likely positions to hit in the first round, if the Broncos are really smart, they draft a center, right? <laughs> That's the most likely to hit, and they need that. They need a center, okay? So who knows? Maybe. Oh, be- my God. If they took a center, <laughs> holy – I haven't even thought about that. Chad, who's the best center? In the draft, do you know? Uh, I'd have to reference my materials, but uh, wait, you didn't talk there, about there, that. There's on... not a center worth the 12th pick in the draft. Let's put it that way. You didn't talk about that on ESPN last not yet. Days, yeah, I've got four hours of ESPN today, so I'm sure that one oh, will come shit. up. <laughs> yeah, Chad's killing it. Wow, Chad is absolutely you. killing it. All I right, know, it's big awesome. time. No, man, I think they'll go for a quarterback. I think, uh, uh, like I said yesterday, I think Zach Wilson. Is insurance in case Bo Nix or or Panix isn't there at twelve? I think they want Bo Nix because you know all the chatters that JJ McCarthy will be long gone by then. I don't think the Broncos want to trade future first round picks for this. I don't think they want to trade for Pat Sertan. I don't think they want to trade up. They want to sit at twelve and they want to get Bo Nix. That's my opinion here. Now, will he be there? I think that there's you know a lot of mocks say he will, but then some folks say maybe not. Right? Maybe all. Th- Six of those guys could be gone in the first half of the draft. So, like, like you say, D Mac, if you know you want a guy, you got to draft him early, right? Don't wait yes. around for him. And so, yes. if people are going to employ that tactic, then then there's a chance Bo Nix could be gone at twelve, which would be a bummer. And you know, you don't want to draft Michael Penix because he's the only one left either. 
So I do think they'll go after Bo Nix. I hope they do. And then they'll, I, I would like that quarterback room, you know, Bo Nix, uh, Zach Wilson, and Stiddy as the, as the wily veteran teaching him the ropes. And don't forget about Ben Danucci, who's on the team ben too. Danucci. Ben Danucci. All right, well, Daniel Jeremiah. See, this is where I, I roll my eyes at the draft experts because they say, oh, well, Nix isn't worth it at 12, but he would be at 22. And I, 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 I'm staggered by that as if there's like multiple quarterbacks on the team. Like there are multiple other guys that play positions. It doesn't fucking matter. There's, there's, if he's either going to play or he's not going to play. And if he's going to play, he's the quarterback. Okay. It's not one of like four pass rushers or four guards and three tackles and 10, you know, secondary guys no you're the fucking quarterback that's it and either you're gonna play or not so the whole concept that is well he's not quite worth 12 what are you talking about either this fucker is gonna play or not i know i'm getting emotional here but it's it's one of the things that kills me and it is that crazy roll of the dice like darren i'll tell you daniel jeremiah is mock. all right he's got i'll just skip to the broncos he's got the eagles Going for uh, Fuaga. Am I getting that right, Chad? I hope. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, and the, the Eagles moving up to 12 for Fuaga. Then the Raiders taking Penix at 13 with the Broncos taking Bo Nix at 22. Now, while on the surface that might be, oh, my God, what a genius move because clearly they'd probably get a second-round pick after that, which would be an additional starter. Okay, in theory, that's great. But what does it tell you about a guy that every other NFL team basically thinks is dog shit <laughs> and um, and what your commitment's going to be to that guy? Now, I, this I've heard you do this on PhD, where you're trying to land this commitment thing, uh, as if now we've already had Sean Payton basically say, "I'm smarter at evaluating quarterbacks than anyone else in the NFL." Right. So if Sean Payton honestly feels as if he's that much smarter than anyone else. Do you not trust Sean Payton within that? Oh. If he thinks he can get the guy who best suits his offense. It's a good point. At the 22nd pick rather than the 12th pick. Do you, do you trust Sean Payton or not? Do you trust Greg Pinner's trust in Sean Payton? Because he, either you do or, or, or you don't. If this is the way he views the draft and this is the way he looks at these quarterbacks, um, aren't we supposed to believe in him? Trust the organization, the, 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 the Rockies quotes? If that happens and I get some sort of ridiculous quarterback competition thing, I'm going I'm going to lose it because that there shouldn't be a quarterback competition. There should be quarterback development. Now, I get it. Zach Wilson Nate is just under a 1-year contract. It's a break glass in case of emergency sort of thing. But if there is not a clear secession plan with Bo Nix if they drop back to get him and they're just like, "Well, we don't know." We'll see. I mean, I, I really am going to break something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, the question is, like, if you know that he'll be there at 22 and you want to do that, then do that. But, but what if he's gone? You know what I mean? That would be the risk that you take. That you, that you... Well, that's right. That's, yeah. that, that's right. Also, but, does, but, but real quick, say... though, about the, the quarterback competition thing. Like, um, what if they draft Bo Nix, what, whether they get him at 12 or 22, and they come into camp and Zach Wilson's just dialing it. He's oh just my lighting God. it up. No, don't say, oh, my God. You have a guy who's a second pick in the draft who has a lot of talent who has never had good coaching. And what if all of a sudden he blossoms – You'd be frustrated because it didn't fall into your. I'd be draft fr I'd be frustrated because that meant you gave up on another position. You 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 what? you you could have got a starter. Okay, it's the no. So number you'd be upset if Zach Wilson turned out to be a Pro Bowler because you passed up on a potential starter in the first round. I wouldn't be upset if Zach Wilson is a Pro Bowler because that means you're probably in the playoffs and you're winning games. But I think the team would be better. If you're going to go with Zach Wilson to get a starter at another position, I don't know that about Zach Wilson. No shit. And that's why it's confusing with what they did on the same week of the draft when they had months to get it together.
I, I, there's no so many question marks about all these college quarterbacks as well, Dmac. And you better well, you, you know better head your bets a little bit because, like you said, most of the 36 percent hit rate or whatever it is. I mean, most of these quarterbacks don't work out. And so, if you don't have a contingency plan, then you're dumb. And except, especially like the injury. I mean. You know, only two quarterbacks in the NFL started every game for their team last year. You got to assume players are going to get hurt. Sometimes young players take unnecessary chances and end up getting hurt. So if you don't stack that room with some talent and guys you can develop, not just one, but multiple, aren't you playing it wrong? I think I think it's so risky what they're doing. And I look at Daniel Jeremiah's mock, and I, I respect Daniel Jeremiah. I know he talks to scouts and agents. This is not a dude in mom's basement, okay? And he's the second guy, second guy I've seen with this concept that the Eagles trade with the Broncos and the Broncos pick up Bo Nix at 22. Second guy I've seen that. And that makes so much sense for what the Broncos really want to do, which is to get a second round pick as well. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'd be okay with it as long as Chad, there, there is development for Bo Nix that you really do give him a shot. And, and Nate, you got me on this. Okay, brother. If, if, if Zach Wilson turns out to be the cat's meow and what you're advocating for, by the way, is Zach Wilson makes the Pro Bowl. So he beats out Stidham. He makes the Pro Bowl because he's a free agent and you're about to back up the Brinks truck for fucking Zach Wilson. Oh, my God. Why are you worried about paying people? If, I'm not. If I'm you, not. But that's what you're spec. That's what happens. If, if you got playing. a Pro Bowl quarterback, who cares if you pay him like a I, Pro Bowl quarterback? I'm fine with that, but you lose out on all of the benefit of developing the entire team because now you're seeing – don't forget, you're about to back up the Brings truck for Patrick Sertan and Quinn Miners, and now we're going to throw $40 million at Zach Wilson? I mean, to me, it's, it's kind of batshit crazy. Like, you just draft your quarterback, you develop the rest of the team around him, you pay Sertan Miners and get some other great guys – and and go in that direction. But I, I have been literally fucking saying the same thing for the past 10 years. I, I have not changed my tune on this, so I'm not going to change it today, Chad. I'm with you. The best path to success is to draft a quarterback, have him at the rookie salary pool number, which is going to be far lower than the veteran numbers. You have some predictable numbers for at least for the first four years. You can build up the rest of your team. You can give extensions to Pat Sertan and Quinn Miners and whoever else deserves one. That's the clearest path to success. So once you start venturing away from that, now you start to chip away at your, your success ratio there. And if Zach Wilson does become the guy, then he's going to want to get paid. And within that, you've got to make salary cap moves based around that. So this team that is still going to, you know, I know we're taking a majority of the Russell Wilson hit this year, but if this Zach Wilson scenario plays out, there's still another $35 million in dead cap hit next year for Russell Wilson. So it makes it difficult to build up the rest of the team. The clearest path to success is to draft a quarterback with this year's draft and have that guy at an acceptable number for the next four years, which then allows you to build up, shore up the rest of the team and get past the lack of draft cap space because of Russell Wilson and the lack of draft capital because of Russell Wilson. Yeah. If only this were a video game, you know, if only it were a board game and, and the thing and the pieces you play, so that you're going to perform exactly how you think they are and everything's going to line up exactly how you want it to. We are preparing for things to not work out in areas. That's why we at stack depth to our team. That's why we fill these rooms with talented players. We understand injuries happen. Guys underperform. My Zach Wilson scenario is unlikely, but would be pretty cool if it worked out that way. And I would take it. I would take any quarterback who performs at a Pro Bowl level and figure out how to construct the team around it because so many quarterbacks underperform. And we've had underperforming quarterbacks here for years, including yeah. the last guy we gave a, a, almost a record-setting contract to. So, yes, you would want a young quarterback, like a Brock Purdy situation. You could build the rest. Of course, that's ideal. But nothing happens ideally. Look at all these big swings and misses we've taken around here. So whatever works out, I'm talking about good football. If anyone plays good football at the quarterback position, we want him on the field. And we're going to find a way to keep him on the field and build the team around him. I would not have acquired Zach Wilson when they did. Um, it didn't, doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense unless they truly believe they're not going to draft a quarterback in the first place. Why pick him up now? 
it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I fear uh, what the Broncos will do is trade back. And I look at Daniel Jeremiah's mock. I'm like, okay. I mean, I get it. I get where you're coming from, brother. And picking up, I don't know, who fucking knows, probably a cornerback at 22. And then a tight end in the second round, I guess. And, and are you are you, how how like are you building yourself up to be just super disappointed? Yeah, I yeah, can feel it. Yes. I can feel it coming, yes. man. It's been ratcheting up slowly all day long. I, I mean, there's so it. few things in your life that you bang your fucking head about, you know, when you spend so much time on. And and frankly, guys, I've been right. Okay, I've been right. I've been proven right on this because of the <laughs> failure that the team has had. There, there's a couple things that I've just been right about. Okay. It's been this particular topic and that instability and in ownership would lead to disaster eventually on the field. And sadly, I've been right about both of those things. So listen, but I do hear you about Sean Payton and we do got to trust Sean Payton. And Zach Wilson is clearly here because of Sean Payton as is Stidham. So, and I know they're all in with Sean Payton. So there is, you're not wrong about that. There is an element of like, Hey man, you, you can't be, you're not to be blamed for the sins of the past. You're your own guy. I, I do feel that. And this is where you got me on this one. Like I got to, I got to roll with the guy that they trust, Chad. You're not wrong about that. Yeah. And I think, of course, we want the dream scenario, but Nate's also correct. Both things are true. We want to be able to draft a quarterback, get him under the rookie salary cap number and roll with that. But if not, then if you have a quarterback I don't think you look your gift quarterback in the face and go, oh, no, we don't want you. We don't want to pay you. No. So if, you, if Zach Wilson ends up being the guy, then great. You got a guy. Not every team in the league has a guy. So if you have them, be happy with it, and you'll figure it out along the way. Uh, I'm just, you know, doing the Ocean's Eleven thing where everything falls into place perfectly. The security guard turns his back at the right time. The power goes out at the right time. Yeah. You know, all, all the things happen exactly perfectly. That's the dream scenario. But occasionally you got to read and react, as Nate pointed out. And if Zach Wilson's the guy, then we roll with that. But, but ideally today with this draft, there's an opportunity with the 12th pick to get a quarterback that is highly rated, highly regarded. And if Sean Payton is really, truly a quarterback base coach who can move the needle with almost every quarterback he gets couldn't do it much with russell wilson but gets gets the guy who he can work with and let's get that done and let's get past this quarterback question there's been 13 bad quarterbacks in a row 13 wow, is that bad right? quarterbacks in a row for the denver broncos since oh, peyton manning that's crazy i'll say it again 13 that's fucking ridiculous but Just it's also it's almost kind of like saying every chick i've dated since cindy crawford has been ugly you know what I'm saying? Um, like, yeah, like I get it that they haven't played well, but the standard that we've been that we've created with Peyton, oh my god, has has been pretty astronomical. Yeah, but I would I'd probably settle for a Cole's underwear model too. I mean, yeah, it would probably be yeah. all right. Like now, you know? they all fall short in front of Peyton Manning, but these guys weren't even half. They weren't even acceptable NFL starters. They weren't even acceptable. No one could accept the play from any of these guys. There may have been some questions about Drew Locke and his potential future, but outside of that, all these guys were just bad, 13 in a row. So to shore it up and to make a move today, even if it pans out to not be the right move, at least you're showing some organizational aggressiveness. You're trying yeah. to solve the problem. Uh, I at least want to see that. All right, I'll tell you about a couple of other mocks, Matt Miller and Field Yates. They both have the Broncos staying at 12 and taking Dallas Turner, who mm -hmm. is, um, you know, uh, Chad, why don't you give us a quick breakdown on Dallas Turner in terms of his quality? Dallas Turner's a, a great edge guy. Uh, watched him play a lot over the last couple of years. Not quite to the level of Will Anderson, who went number three last year to the Houston Texans, ended up being defensive rookie of the year for the league last year. Uh, Dallas Turner still got a little bit of size to add, but he's got great bend. Yeah, he played at Alabama, played top level competition, productive, durable, all the things you would want. There's some folks who are looking at uh, Latou, the edge from UCLA yeah. above Dallas Turner from a pure <laughs> pass rushing standpoint. Maybe Latou's a little bit higher ceiling than Dallas Turner, but Latou's got all the medical issues with he had to 
you know, retire basically for a year and a half, two years because of right. a neck injury. So right. there is that out there about him. So Dallas Turner seems to be the safest of all the edge picks. And of the nine possibilities for the Broncos, I got Dallas Turner probably number four on that list of nine possibilities. All right, Nate. Dallas Turner or an edge rusher. That would be staying at 12, going in a different direction. What do you think that would mean for, for what Sean Payton's looking at? I don't see it. I see them going okay. offense. This is Sean Payton's thing. He, he right. needs to he needs to figure out his offense. This is a crappy offense last year, and the defense wasn't great either. But I think I think the defense actually performed better than the offense last year. I think they had a couple horrible games that really skewed uh, the numbers on them. But they actually, I think, shorted up a little bit in the second half of the season. Didn't play perfect. But the offense really needs to be revamped, and and I think that they need some dynamic players on offense, as a, namely a quarterback. You know, so I don't see Sean Payton going defense in the first round. Personally, this is his show now, and he knows what he needs. Without Russell Wilson, he's trying to build the offense anew. I think he's going to go with an offensive player. Yeah, I uh, I do too. Um, and I'm just reading through. Listen, mock drafts are just that. Listen, it's speculation. Uh, you don't make too much out of them. But one of the things about mock drafts, it is the same names that come up over and over and over again. It is. Um, and not that somebody can't creep in there, uh, but I'll give you a high risers of like Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Like yeah. it, and months ago, nobody was talking about him. Now he's, I mean, almost the first, I think, Chad, one of the first corner, if not the first cornerback off most draft boards. Yeah, when I'm looking at this Broncos draft, um, I don't see an offensive player if it's not a quarterback. The top three receivers will be gone before the Broncos pick at 12. Right, right. Brock Bowers most, will be most likely be gone as well. The best tackle, Joe Alt, will be gone. Right. So then you're looking at edge guys, Dallas Turner, Latou, Jared Verse. You're looking at cornerbacks, Mitchell or Terrion Arnold from Alabama, maybe Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle from Texas. Those are the guys who fit at the 12th pick for the Broncos. There's not an offensive guy – left who ranks high enough in my opinion um to to be worthy of that 12th pick so the, yeah this this is when you quarterback get, or it's defense in my mind well i go I, I call it auto draft like anybody could do that i mean right. if we're just doing bpa auto draft and listen i'm not gonna when i say auto draft it does sound like an insult but if most teams just did the auto draft on espn you'd do all right you you, you really would um <laughs> and sometimes i think guys overthink it so all right, what do you think they should do? What do you think they will do? Let's just go there. Nate, what do you think they should do? What do you think they will do? I think they should go quarterback at 12. I think they will go quarterback. Okay, 12. all right. And, and specifically, Knicks? Yeah, I think so. It's it, been all quiet. On the, He's the one guy you haven't heard anything about. Um, you know, Peyton Manning's talking about J.J. McCarthy, how they really like him. Uh, no, they Peyton wouldn't reveal that information right before the draft i'd be very surprised the broncos trade up for jj mccarthy um i think zach wilson like i said is an insurance plan in case they can't get bo nix but i think bo nix's um experience in college and his you know processing ability i think the thing that he does well i think he's pretty mobile as well scored 14 touchdowns on the ground a couple of years ago um and he's got a lot of experience and these days you really need it I did see an interesting list of like, the, he's an old quarterback. He's 24 years old, right? And he's married. Yeah. And, and he's the same age as Zach Wilson. Actually. I know. It's crazy. Penix also 24, but I saw a list of like the oldest, oldest quarterbacks ever drafted. And most of them actually don't pan out. And so, yeah. you know, we, Whedon was the oldest one. He was 28. Right. Mm -hmm. But but these guys were 24, 23. A lot of them, they, they just don't pan out. And so they stayed in college a long time. They had good college careers um, and they maybe peaked. They had maybe had a lower ceiling, right? But but I think it's different now because of the way the NFL is structured. And I talk about this all the time with the CBA. These guys don't get a lot of time to practice. They don't get a lot of time in the preseason. They don't get a double days during training camp. They just don't get the reps. And so now more than ever, I think that experience coming into the NFL really, really is valuable for a coach who wants him to hit the ground running. There's You, you don't have much of a – like look at Zach Wilson, how quickly things went bad for him. It's a, right. it's a miracle that he's actually been saved here, right? So a lot of guys get thrown into the fire. Their careers get ruined because of the inexperience. I think Bo Nix's experience is going to entice Sean Payton. He's going to draft him. Uh, I think they should go quarterback at 12. I think it will ho hopefully it'll end up being Bo Nix. He still will be available. Um, you know, he's the fifth rated quarterback on the board. Uh, I think he can slide to the Broncos. There's, there's all this 
conversation that uh, the Broncos have had some follow up conversations with Bo Nix, um, you know, after the visit. So they certainly have spent some time with him. I think Sean Payton clearly wants to be comfortable with whoever this guy is going to be. Um, and it seems likely it's Bo Nix. So hopefully uh, Nate and I are correct here. I think they should draft a quarterback and move up <laughs> with the Bears or the Falcons to get them. Mm. So I think they should. They, it won't cost you Sertan or that big of draft picks. So I think they should move from 12 to 8 uh, specifically with the Falcons and they should draft at that point. I really, you know, I really don't care. That's where I would trust Sean Payton. <laughs> like if you like Penix, if you like Knicks, I mean, whatever, Sean, but I, I just don't want to see them sitting back. Um, it is crazy to me that Zach Wilson is the same age as Bo Nix and Zach Wilson has 34 starts in the NFL. Um, and you should be spectacular as a 24-year-old in college football going against 19- and 20-year-olds. And guess what? Knicks and Penix were both extraordinary in college. They were. I mean, Knicks had 48 touchdowns and three interceptions in his last year. So he does kind of check that box. But Penix was pretty spectacular as well. My only hesitation on Penix, and I, maybe it's silly, but I, I can't get over the injury stuff because I, I, I guess – I see where Jeff Hireman didn't work out. Jake Butt didn't work out. KJ Hamler had issues. I mean, I think guys just bring their college worn out muscles into the NFL. And I, I get nervous about it, even though all three of those guys, by the way, were healthy in college. All of them. All three of those guys are fine. And then they get to the rigors of the NFL. And I know it's different at the quarterback position, but it makes me nervous enough that if it's a coin flip, I'm moving up and getting Knicks. What I think they'll do. I think they'll fucking move back to 22 with the Eagles and they will draft Bo Nix. I actually think Daniel Jeremiah gets it right. And I think it's going to create a fucking confusing situation. <laughs> and, um, and then I think here's what I really think. I think it's not going to be clear. And Sean Payton's going to bang the fucking table for Dak Prescott as a free agent next year. And you'll be able to get away with that because you won't have much sunk into it. You'll just have a wasted first round pick. That's all. So that's what I think is going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. Mm. Wow. Yeah, wow. I know. It's fucking fun. You are up. just set up. You're setting yourself up to be very angry. And I'm looking forward to coming on here tomorrow morning and just hearing you scream, yell, break stuff. Maybe you'll have some bruises and some cuts on your face from a fight you picked that you didn't win. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? Well, the thing that the thing that people do not understand is how I think. If you get the guy, why do you give a shit, Dmac? And I, I have, I've tried to explain myself, and I, I seem to fall short on this a million times. Yeah. But the the arrogance that you are smarter than everybody else in the NFL is difficult for me to swallow. And drafting quarterbacks in the twenties to me is arrogance. It can sometimes work out, but you are literally saying we are smarter than everybody. That's what you're saying. The Packers were saying we're smarter than everybody with Jordan Love. Um, the Broncos said we're smarter than everybody with Tim Tebow. You're smarter than every Paxton Lynch. Why, is, Nix, why does it mean that that? I'm because so every other needy quarterback team has deemed that guy less than except for you. And you're drafting where playoff teams draft. But this is it, not about like like football coaches differ in the things that they value in players. It's not as easy as what you talk about the auto draft thing. Like group think we all see the same guy the same way. Systems are different. Personalities are different. Experience from the coaches are different. What do you want in your leader? That's all different. And so to say that like that and dismiss teams that maybe see something in a guy that others don't, I think is a little narrow minded. Right. And you got to open up your mind. Like have, like do you see things? In people, you know, that others might not. Do you, as a radio guy, do you see things that other profession, radio professionals don't? Do you th do you see stuff coming that maybe the guys with decades in the business maybe don't? Well, fucking sadly, I am the guy with decades in the business at this point. That's what I'm saying. So you, you got, have decades. If, if you, hey, brother, if you got more decades than me, you're probably six feet under right now, unfortunately, <laughs> for, for my case particularly. But, you know yes, there, there are things that make sense to me or I see that others don't. And I, I scratch my head on it. And generally I'm right about that shit too. But the Packers, the Packers were right on Aaron Rodgers. The Packers seem to be right on Jordan love. The Baltimore Ravens were right on Lamar Jackson. So 
You can draft late and still be right. And all the other teams could pass on somebody and you can still be right. So now here's what's going to sound crazy. And I know this does not seem congruent or make any sense, but I would be more excited if the Broncos drafted, uh, went back. I know this is going to sound messed up, but it would make more sense to me if they moved back to 22 and took another position, got a second round pick, packaged that and moved up with say the 49ers at 31 for Bo Nix. I know that sounds fucked up, um, but that would make more sense to me. And that's what happened with Lamar Jackson. And for the record, I've said this a million times, only three times in NFL history has a quarterback been taken in the thirties, Patrick Ramsey, Teddy Bridgewater, and Lamar Jackson. The only reason I like that is because I detest second round drafting of quarterbacks. Third round, I'm not high on either. Fourth round, I shrug my shoulders. Don't love it, but whatever. But I fucking hate second round quarterbacks because there's a lack of commitment and you don't have the fifth year option. Why give yourself less flexibility? I don't get that. So I'd rather move up like the Ravens did so at least you have some flexibility when you just simply take a guy in the 20s, to me, you're just arrogant and you're stupid for the most part. So I do find there a difference, even though it's easy to pick that one apart. Okay. I know. I, I didn't leave much of a conversation point there. I know. Okay. I get it. I know, no. I know. I know. I know. I know. No. So so the chances that you're disappointed tonight are very, very high. Super high. So, so, so when this continues to happen year after year. <laughs> yes. Do you, you, <laughs> <laughs> do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and say, maybe it's me. Maybe I don't get it. Yeah, I would be saying that, Nate, if the Broncos were in the playoffs. It's sure. not as simple, though. It's not just not as simple as the Broncos' first-round pick every year has doomed them. That's not. It's not so easy to distill down the success or failures of a team on one guy. And you seem to think that you can rest it all on this dude. And there's so many other things going on. So many. I mean, the Broncos have nine picks, right? There's going to be nine new guys coming into a team with 53. And, 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 and all the, there's going to be 90 guys trying to figure this out with a bunch of coaches, a bunch of moving parts. One dude is not going to make or break this thing. Okay? It's about everybody coming together and finding a way to do that. I, so I literally think the quarterback, the coach. Well, actually, I was talking to a very – I can't even, I'll have to tell you guys offline, you know, who I was talking to, but a very high level NFL guy. And he told me it's ownership coach quarterback. Every time. That's That's it. And I go, I go, what about the GM? And he goes, nah, forget that. doesn't matter. Not really. Okay. So last year, best owner, I mean, best new owner, deepest pockets in the NFL, Sean Payton, highest paid coach and Russell Wilson, a, a hall of famer. And what the fuck happened? Well, because that because the coach, it wasn't his decision, and the owner had very little to do with the Russell Wilson decision either, as he came in after that deal was already done. And it shows you George Payton. Like, I don't know how George Payton has a job. Look at what Chad's checking out now. We, we lost Chad. Um, no, I'm Adam, yeah. I'm Adam Schefter. I, I got to check my phone. Oh, what Schefter saying? Radio calls. No, I'm Adam Schefter. I'm checking my phone on air. Um, uh, that being said, uh, Russell Wilson was not – Greg Penner's decision. He went along with things, but he was the gun was pointed to his head on that one. He certainly wasn't Sean Payton's decision. That's for sure. So now listen again, I guess, you know, Chad made a very salient point. Do you trust Sean Payton or not? And I, I will take a deep breath because you don't really have a choice, but to trust him. I will say this. If they don't draft a quarterback at 12, okay. If they don't draft a quarterback at 12, I think the starting quarterback in 2025 for the Denver Broncos will be Dak Prescott. How's <laughs> no that for way. a hot take? That's super well, be, hot. Be, yeah, super hot because it's I don't not happening. It's, it's just not. If it, it well, he'll be a free agent. And what have oh well, what have the Cowboys done? What have the Cowboys done with Dak Prescott? I hear you, man. I don't think Dak's the guy. I just uh, I, he doesn't have that killer instinct. And I, I'm I not think saying Sean- I'm not saying he is, but I'm looking in the mind of Sean Payton. How long is Sean Payton at age 61, 62? Which will be in the next couple of years. How long is he going to want to wait around to win a championship? So you, so whoever, um, so he drafts the guy this year, right? And if it doesn't work out after one year, he's going to bounce on him just like he it didn't de- work out after one year. No, nope. like, Nate, is, it depends to- where it depends where he drafts him. He drafts him at twelve. He drafts him at twelve. He's oh, in this for the long okay. haul. If okay. he trades drafts back at thirteen, he's out. 
Well, what, are you going to trade back one fucking spot with the Raiders? No. I mean, you know, you're being facetious now. Correct. And, and you're pushing <laughs> all my goddamn buttons. Yeah. Beep, so beep, 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 beep. God, I should know when a joke is being played on me. All right. I, which I do. I'm just emotional. That's all. You think? Uh, I think stupid. you broke the record for F-bombs on this one. Maybe. Oh, good it's, job. It's been a decade of building. And I am scarred by sitting in a bar with the, with 300 people chanting chub, chub, chub when you should have drafted Josh Allen. The worst draft mistake <laughs> in Broncos history. Everything would have been solved if you just did what was right there. And this isn't as clear. That's what makes this year a little bit more frustrating and head-scratching. That year was clear. Clear yeah. as a fucking bell, okay? <laughs> this year is not. This year is way more complicated than 2018. A total moron could have made the right call on that one. Uh, uh, Wait, didn't a couple other teams pass on Josh Allen, too? Well, but they went with quarterbacks. Right. May, Mayfield went to the – well, that's their own evaluation. I can't – listen – you you're you're the Browns. You got to figure out five different guys. I mean, all right. I think that's actually more complicated than what happened in the Broncos. And then the Jets were good. They did the right thing. They traded from six to three. They traded from six to three. The Broncos sat there with their thumb up their butt and sat there at five and just watched the Jets pass them. And they took Sam Darnold. All right. Now it's fucking easy. You got three guys to choose from: Josh Allen, Rosen, or Lamar Jackson. And the reason why Allen is the easiest one is because of everything else you had with him. You coached him in the senior bowl. Gary Kubiak was at his pro day. He had been to the facility. He played at Wyoming in bad weather. Nothing against Rosen or Lamar Jackson, but this wasn't fucking hard to figure out. It wasn't. It was easy. It was simple. I love the I love the uh the New England fuck. How do you spell that? F A H C K. Yeah. Fuck. You got All it, right. man. You All got right. it, man. All right, you got boys. this. I'm, I'm killing everybody. Are you gonna bring this? Are you gonna bring this energy on PhD today? Is 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 Tyler gonna be uh, on board with your your vehemence? Well, we'll we're fixing to find out. As Gary Kubiak said, that's on at noon, and then we'll do hangout live from 4:30 to 5:30 at Stoney's. We'll be on AM nine on 92.5 and AM 950 for draft coverage. And then you fellas will join me later to react to all of it. And then we'll be back on tomorrow morning. We want to thank Ed Prather. Ed's my guy. Ed Prather.com, the number one trusted team in real estate. We couldn't do this without Ed and his support. So we appreciate him. Boys, I am fired up for today. I, I, I'm just so used to getting burned. I'm sorry to hog everything today. Um, mm -hmm. But, but. We'll have plenty of time to react to it. And I love you guys. Um, we're all more or less on the same page, by the way. We really are. This is this is as close as we've been to the the same sort of thinking. You guys aren't morons like some other people I have to deal with. But um <laughs> but not but Tyler, Tyler wants a quarterback, and Scott Hastings is, you know, he's in LA covering the Lakers in the night. Who's the moron then? It's it's not the guys, it's it's not those guys. It's um uh, the 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 trade back and take a corner crew. It's 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 uh, it's, <laughs> and that's not Tyler. That is not Tyler. It's it's other people. And I'll just leave the names out. But the it's the two people that bug me the most are trade back and take a corner crew and the uh, the draft doesn't matter. Uh, that those are the people that just blow me away. The draft that's just laziness. It's serious laziness. It's like okay, I got it. You're you're too lazy to figure this out. The draft doesn't matter, people. It's a crapshoot, people, and trade back and get a corner, people. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. I gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We go. We'll talk to you later. Love you guys. See you later. Peace. See you later. Bye.